Like I said, once you download the Linux package, the one with uh, 196 megabytes. So you come here, look at it right there. You find out, you see that it's Linux of that of this is the download. Once you are satisfied, satisfied with that, the next thing you do is you go into your terminal. Now in your terminal, what you need to do, let me make this one a little bit bigger. So in your terminal, what you need to do is to look at everything in your terminal. So you can see, so you go to your downloads, you do CD download. Now inside your CD download, you can see you have your downloaded um, zap in, inside of it, right? Then the next thing you need to do is to, to extract it. To extract it, so just let me clear this so it's going to go after you see it. So you do you extract it and how do you extract? How do you extract it? You do your car um, tab XF and you put your zipping zap underscore 2.13.0 underscore that's Linux and uh, dot what GZ, right? Then you press enter. Then it starts to unzip it, right? And immediately it's unzip. You can see you don't have any error message or any message. So the next thing you do is you just um you can see that you have your zap the unzipped one here. So you can actually delete this one or just leave it there. So you can want to use that. So you just you see the uh zap um that is underscore two three two point three point one point zero. And when you enter, when you run this, this is what it gives you. Now you can see that it's giving you both the database, the language, the library, license, the plugins, and reading. Really. So to start this also, so let me bring this one up here. You can see. To start this now, because this is the main shell file, the shell file, right, the scripts. So what to do is, there are two ways at which you can actually start this. You can actually use patch under zap.sh or the script file. Or you can do something. Instead of the patch, you do this and you do zap dot sh so when you do it out with two you get i think for the previous one we use bash right we already use bash so let us use this one. now you can see when you click enter what is going to do it is going to open this for you and you can see now that it has opened this for you it is uh it is so you see when it's open it is going to bring up this so it's going to ask you this question so frequently when you open it, it's going to be asking this question but what you do is for this one just um click no no i don't want to persist this session at the moment in time so click on no and you can always click on remember my shows and do not ask again. Then you click on start. When you click on start, you can see it open up for you. And there you go. That is how to start up over zap. And you can see right now your proxy settings, your port is here, port 8080, and your proxy is in local host. Yes. And so you can actually do you come to your tools. Now, if you are going to come here to um, change most of our proxy settings and get our SSL certificate, like I said, we are going to come to tools. Now in tools you go to what options and in options you go to server certificate right and you click your enter. Now server certificate is that SSL. Oh server SSL certificate, then you go to this name, server certificate. It has an X with it, right? So what we do is we come here and we click on we click on save. So when you click on save, it's going to ask so it's asking us that what path do you want us to so let us just put it inside our panel, right? So we might put the ones inside desktop, but let's put inside our download there, right? I will do. So you click open and you put it inside the space. Save. Now you can see it is saved, right? So the next thing that we need to do is what? And that is um uh, we need to uh, make some changes to our proxy settings, right? So I think in network you just need to look for local server and proxy settings. Then here you change this one to one two seven point zero point zero point one. That is your local host IP. And for this, you see it's already in port eighty eighty, but I actually don't really like port eighty eighty. Really. So you can use port eighty eighty one for this, right? And I'm going to click uh, on okay. Now, once I've done that, why this is still open, I need to come back to my Firefox. Now, in my Firefox, I go to, so I can open a new page, close this one. In my Firefox, I need to go to my settings. So now, in the settings, I'm going to look for certificates. So in certificate, I click open and I import certificate. Where do I want to import the certificate from? From download, and this is it, right? Then I click open. Now, I say trust this certificate to identify website. And do I want to trust this certificate to identify email users also? Probably, yes, you get, I need to um, trust it. And I click OK for it. And OK. Now the certificate is already what imported. Then the next thing I need to do what is to scroll down from here to um, settings. Okay. Now to the network settings, I click on OK because I need to configure it so that it's a hash. So it's going to be working hand in hand with my um, with, with the OAP zap. Okay. This is, I bring it to manner settings and I put the port to one two two dot zero point zero point one right zero point two one. And the port number that I use is what port what eighty eighty what one. And I click on. Uh, no, if I do that, I also use this proxy for HTTPS, then I click OK. And once immediately I have done that, you can see it's working. And you can just minimize this. And when I come here, now in my zap, this is just a test run. Just, for us to just test run zap, before we move to our next one, 
to use Zap fully. If you click on this automatic, yeah. now you can see even in Zap, you have these three sections here, right? Where and we you can use different modes in Zap. You have the save mode, the protection, the protected mode, standard mode, and the attack mode, right? And up here, you can see we have files, uh, how you can come here to edit, check some um, view, some image trees, and uh, you know, on our Zap and whatever we are um, trying to um, um, pen test on our Zap. So for us to quickly run Zap, you can actually come here and try this first automated um, scan first. Click on OK. And right here, you can actually try BBC. Dot, um, go dot uk right if i'm not mistaken the um address yeah so when we do that we, uh, we know that pvc is https right but <coughs> whether we want or not we have or not for this one we just have to make sure we put http no need of https so we click on um, attack like i said this is just a fast um, test run to check our zap is okay and you can see now that we've done that it's, it's actually reading and you can see on the background it's actually giving us the report of every scan we are running right on the background giving us the scan of every and you can see some sql injection being run through right you can see this that's some SQL yeah. injection they want to write by said um zap and you shouldn't run this zap on any any website anyhow like that because it could actually damage your website actually okay that's why we have for cyber security we have the same space where we can actually um practice all what we've actually learned over and over okay so the next thing we are going to do now is why this scan is still running why this scan is still running if you, if you come if you come here to alert in this alert place right now so all the scans that have been running this alert is actually going to show us all those kind of running the vulnerabilities and the kind of attacks and um, uh, vulnerabilities and um, weaknesses we get um, that, that is on the and how how the rich level of those um, of those um, vulnerabilities are being there. For example, now we have this cross domain JavaScript source file inclusion. When we double click on it, uh, we double click on it, you can see right there uh, quite some information that has so I said the rich level is actually low and the parameters it is can see the parameters and evidence is yes, not showing us how to attack it. But when you use BWA, BWA or maybe it will probably show you the kind of attack, what you attack like it is. And <clears throat> let us try to even see any other one open also. You can see for this other one to see if you come to this um, wildcard directive, right? This wildcard directive, and uh, you can come to style. So you come back and come to style and source on save line. So let's see if this is actually looking more, it's looking interesting, and this is coming quick, but this is looking interesting. <clears throat> so you double click on it. <clears throat> When you click on it, you can see right here what we have. This is totally giving you total description of the vulnerability that is seen. And also, um, Zap is not going to just leave you angry. Actually giving you the solution, possible solutions. You might have a better solution to go, right? But give you possible solutions that if you apply to, right? If you apply the solution, this will actually solve the issue. And you can see the evidence of the of the vulnerability. You can see the reports here and the evidence of the vulnerability. And it's telling you that the risk of the vulnerability was is medium. And the confidence level is actually high. Right, but the risk um, is, is immediate. So, quite like that, this is just a simple way to use um, um, WhatsApp. And I mean, for the long term, you can actually use for you to have a, a place where you can actually test on your pen testing. Um, so, nobody is disturbing you, so you'll not be scared. Maybe someone is watching or that they want to run or what is right. So, we have um, you can make use of MetaSquare 2 and go to the solution presentation of MetaSquare 2. You install MetaSquare 2 on your virtual box or page VMware, link it to your Kali Linux, and voila, you're able to do all your experiments in a safe space.